Hey guys, welcome back to the Girl Gun London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a dual UK and American citizen, and today we are deep diving into the topic of UK versus US sandwiches, which I am stressed about. This was a topic voted on by my subscribers who get to see the polls I make. So if you want to vote on future videos, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button. For the record, this topic won over UK versus US. Sorry, I say verse a lot. I know it's verses. Don't come for me. Um, this topic won over UK versus US board games. So if you wanted the board games one, don't be mad at me. Take it up with the voters and vote next time. Anyway, I've put this video off for a few weeks, actually. It's not because I'm not interested in sandwiches. Who, who isn't interested in sandwiches? But honestly, the topic is so overwhelming and very expansive. And I asked for some suggestions on sandwiches and you were all so helpful, but I got over a hundred comments about sandwiches and I just couldn't shake the feeling that I was going to let someone in the sandwich world down by not covering every single thing in this video. So we're gonna do our best, but if you have more to share, please do so in the comments. Okay, here we go. Whether you're a big fan of tuna and sweet corn or PB&J, sandwiches are an integral part of life in UK and US culture. Maybe you're having finger sandwiches at an afternoon tea. Maybe you're packing sandwiches for lunch at the beach. Maybe you're buying a sandwich at a cafe or you're sitting down to a homemade sandwich packed with your own favorite fillings. My personal favorite sandwich, by the way, is peanut butter. Hold the jelly. But I also like turkey sandwiches, coronation chicken sandwiches, and egg sandwiches, in case you ever need to know this bit of sandwich trivia about me. But what is more interesting than my favorite sandwich is the history of the sandwich itself, and that has a UK history. The story goes that the Earl of Sandwich, John Montague, technically he was the fourth Earl of Sandwich, invented the sandwich in 1762 when asking for roast beef to be served to him between two slices of bread so he could eat it more easily at the gambling table. There is even a franchise of sandwich shops now called the Earl of Sandwich. I've eaten at the one in Orlando. Now, was the Earl of Sandwich really the first person in the entire world to ever think about eating food this way? Probably not, as people had been eating combinations of bread and fillings way before that, but he is really credited with the creation of the modern sandwich and made it popular among England's gentry. That being said, sandwiches did not immediately sweep either nation. They were served in England, but they were at first considered something that you would eat outside the home, not something that you would make for yourself. And I found a hilarious bit of information that stated that in America, many colonial cooks in the last half of the 18th century were not especially fond of imitating British culinary trends. So America just didn't want to eat sandwiches so soon because they didn't want to be seen as doing something British, this seems to be becoming a theme in our deep dive videos. Either way, sandwiches eventually earned their important place in the daily lives of people in the UK and the US over the years, but they definitely differ in what we put on them. So let's talk about condiments and spreads. One of the major differences that always gets pointed out in these types of videos is that yes, it's true, Americans do not butter their bread for a sandwich. Buttering bread for a sandwich is very popular among the Brits. You would butter the sides of the bread that are going to be facing the fillings. It acts as a barrier. It adds flavor. It doesn't let the bread go soggy from any soggy ingredients. These are all the reasons I've read online. Americans really don't do this. I could not tell you the exact reason why. It's not that Americans don't like butter. We do. But if you're going to slather anything on uh, your bread for a sandwich in the US, it's going to usually be something like mayonnaise or mustard, not butter. And not everyone does that. They might just add the condiments within the fillings, but not necessarily slathering it directly onto the bread beforehand. The only exception I can think of for this is a grilled cheese sandwich in the US. You butter one side of each piece of bread, but not the side touching the cheese, the side that will touch the pan. Because if you're not familiar, grilled cheese in the US is made in a pan or skillet, so the buttered side of the bread goes heat side down, so it browns up. Now let's talk about the types of sandwiches and fillings most popular in each country. This is where I start to get overwhelmed in my research because there are a lot of different types of sandwiches. So keep calm, carry on with me, let's get into it. 
To compare the sandwiches that are popular in each country, we're going to start with the UK. So this is from a poll done by M&S and Costa Coffee for British Sandwich Week, which apparently runs from May 22nd to May 28th every year. Mark your calendars. Going from most popular of the top 10 to least popular, we have a Plowman's, usually loaded with ham, cheddar, pickle, mustard, and lettuce. Then there's ham and cheese, cheese, roast chicken salad, prawn mayo, egg and cress, BLT, tuna and sweet corn, chicken and bacon, and a sausage sandwich. I guarantee you the Americans watching this video just said, you eat what? To more than half of these sandwich flavors. So let's move on to the American side of things. What are Americans' favorite sandwiches? One list I found went like this. Grilled cheese, grilled chicken, turkey, roast beef, ham, BLT, club, typically turkey, bacon, lettuce, and tomato, peanut butter and jelly, pulled pork, and tuna. There are a few similarities between the two countries like BLT and chicken sandwiches, but one major difference, and you'll notice this if you ever eat out in the US, the US loves turkey sandwiches, loves them. On almost every restaurant menu, um, you will find a turkey sandwich, especially on the lunch menu. It is found in kids' lunch boxes every day all over the country. We are obsessed. In the UK, I think the only real time I've seen a turkey sandwich is maybe when someone has a leftover sandwich from Christmas lunch. Turkey isn't eaten commonly in the UK like it is in the US. Now, I've got a whole section on the more weird sandwich combinations in each country coming up, but just to help us define some of the different sandwiches. In the US, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich is extremely popular. Jelly in the US is essentially jam. For the Americans out there, jelly in the UK is gelatin, not the same. A peanut butter and jelly tastes great, like I said. I'm more a fan of the peanut butter rather than the jelly, but it is a staple in American households. Some people put the peanut butter on one piece and the jelly on the other piece and smush it together. Some people spread one first and then try to spread the other on top of it, which doesn't usually work out so great. Um, though you typically can do peanut butter first, then jelly a bit easier. If you try to spread the peanut butter on the jelly, it's probably not gonna work. Fun fact, getting the perfect PB to J ratio is a real art form that Americans learn. We typically use grape jelly as the most common flavor, but sometimes you can also use strawberry jelly. You can even buy PB&J sandwiches with the crust already cut off, uh, known as Uncrustables, that go in kids' lunches. Yes, Americans do love convenience and processed foods. We can't help ourselves. Also in the US, you have the Reuben sandwich, which is a grilled sandwich composed of corned beef, Swiss cheese, sauerkraut, and Thousand Island dressing on rye bread, as well as the Cuban sandwich, which is a variation of a ham and cheese sandwich made with ham, pork, Swiss cheese, pickles, and mustard, typically. In the UK, we've discussed a Plowman's, but Americans probably also haven't heard of Coronation Chicken Sandwiches, which are shredded chicken mixed with mayo, yogurt, curry powder, and chutney in between two pieces of bread. This also didn't make the list of most popular UK sandwiches, but another type of sandwich that's really popular is a cucumber sandwich and smoked salmon sandwich. Both are sort of like an afternoon tea style sandwich. Other ones mentioned in the comment section of the original sandwich poll I posted include brie and grape, stilton and walnut, fish finger sandwich, cheddar cheese and strawberry jam, a banana sandwich, beef and mustard, cottage cheese and celery, cheese and pickle, condensed milk sandwich, brie, bacon and cranberry sauce sandwich. Basically, British people will put anything between two slices of bread. Now let's talk about some out of the ordinary sandwiches that people don't have every single day, but do exist in that country. In the UK, we have the chip buddy and the crisp buddy. I know I say buddy wrong, butty. One day we'll get there. Uh, one is chips, which are thick cut fries for Americans um, between bread and one is crisps, known as potato chips in the US in between bread. I've never had a crisp one, but I have had multiple chip buddies in my life and I absolutely approve and would eat them every day if I wouldn't put on like 8,000 pounds. 
Speaking of putting on 8,000 pounds, in the US we have the Fluffernutter, which is peanut butter and marshmallow fluff served on white bread. We have the Dagwood, a tall, multi-layered sandwich filled with so many different types of meats and cheeses, named after the comic strip character Dagwood. We have the Monte Cristo, a ham and cheese sandwich dipped in egg and fried. The Po' Boy, which is roast beef on a baguette with origins in Louisiana. And the Permonti, famous in Pittsburgh and featuring grilled meat, melted cheese, coleslaw, tomato, and french fries between two thick pieces of bread. Now this leads me into my next difference, the amount of filling in a sandwich. This is something I wouldn't necessarily have noticed myself, but after doing my research and reading enough comments on it, I agree. The US typically tends to add more fillings in their sandwiches, bulking them out and making them huge. Not in something like a PB&J, that's a more simple sandwich for us, but in a lot of other sandwiches. This realization came about after seeing specific quotes from Brits and Europeans online, and I did start to think about British sandwiches and how there are many, many, many different types, but they typically aren't packed incredibly full. Now, someone asked if we eat breakfast sandwiches in America, and we do. An American breakfast sandwich is typically something like egg, bacon, and cheese. The British breakfast sandwich is typically a bacon buddy or breakfast buddy, and often is something like uh, either bacon or sausage with fried egg served between two slices of buttered bread roll. So it's similar to a US breakfast sandwich, but without the cheese. And remember, bacon and actually sausage are different in the UK versus the US. So despite having similar ingredients, the final result is quite different. And also don't forget there are massive, massive regional variations, which is why this video seemed so overwhelming to film. There are going to be so many different types of breakfast sandwiches all throughout the UK and all throughout the US, so I'm just doing what is maybe the most basic generalized version. Let's talk about differences about the language of sandwiches to finish up. It honestly makes my head spin. Um, again, there are so many regional variations on language when it comes to sandwiches that I'm not going to try to claim I'm covering them all, but in the UK, we've got other terms for types of sandwiches depending on the bread and fillings, like bap, buddy, roll, bun, sarni, um, as well as toasties. In the US, we use sandwich as a more general catch-all, I feel, but we might say sammy if we're talking about a sandwich, um, or if we're talking about something that looks like this, we call it a sub, short for submarine sandwich, but no one would ever call it a submarine sandwich. Or in different parts of the country, that's called a hoagie or a hero. We typically do not use the terms bap, buddy, sarni, or toasties, and we would say roll or bun, but typically we'd be referring to the actual bread and not the sandwich itself. This brings me to the end of this video. I hope I've done this topic at least 50% justice. I need to go lie down now from the stress of delivering such an important topic to the internet. I hope you enjoyed. Tell me your favorite sandwich in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.